Greetings, this is Derek Ong with the continuation of the video series on Smart PLS usage uh, for structure equation modeling. This is video number five, and uh, I would like to encourage you to watch my preceding videos before uh, you get to video number five so that you have a better understanding of uh, the uh, preceding things that you need to learn. Now, um, I'm going to be covering this video uh, on measurement model assessment, uh, which I've explained to you what is measurement model and structural model in the preceding video. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the theory of measurement model and running the PLS algorithm. So there are four things in measurement model that we need to look at. Uh, the indicator reliability, convergent reliability, internal consistency, and discriminant validity. This video is going to only cover the first three because the next few videos is going to cover the discriminant validity. So we're going to start with the first one. Um, indicator reliability just basically reflects on the indicator items that is measuring on the uh, latent variables, yeah, which shows that the each of the item is a good measurement of the latent construct, and this must make sure that it's above 0 0.5. Um, just to make a note here that every point that I'm making here has a um, reference uh, below so that you can use, so please use the reference as when and you need to. Um, we also like to look at the Cronbach's alpha, which is to evaluate the reliability of items in terms of unidimensionality on the set of scale items, which must be above 0 0.7. However, um, I'd like to make a note here that um, uh, the latest uh, study shows that you should be using the cron, uh, the rho A as a good measure of uh, this uh, indicator reliability and to look at the unidimensionality because it's a much more accurate measure uh, for the Corpa Alpha. So we're going to be using row A because Smart PLS gives us row A. Um, in terms of convergent reliability, we're going to be looking at the average variance extracted, which is comparable to the proportion of the variance explained uh, in fact analysis, which means you take all the indicator variables and then you uh, make the um, what's the average uh, variance extracted from all the indicator variables on the latent variable. And this one has to be above 0 0.5. Uh, thirdly, we're looking at internal consistency, where we look at Dillon and uh, Goldstein's row, also known as the composite reliability, or we call it CR, uh, measuring the reliability of the indicators where values are between 0 and 1. Uh, good adequate consistency would mean that there is a CR of uh, above 0 0.7. Okay, so in a nutshell, we are supposed to check the loadings indicator is above 0 0.5, the AVE is above 0 0.5, the CR above 0 0.7, and the rho uh, A or comma alpha is above 0 0.7. All right, so now I'm just going to show you this is the model that we have, um, uh, what do you call this, the established just now that we have uh, uh, drawn in the preceding videos. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to run the uh, PLS algorithm. Go to calculate, PLS algorithm. We always maintain everything as default. Let me start calculation. And uh, notice that if we look at the uh, output here, these are the indicator loadings, as you can see. And these were uh, here are the standardized beta coefficients, all right? So these are standardized. So nothing should be more than one here. So what do we do first? Indicator loadings. So, uh, oh, by the way, these uh, numbers inside here are also known as the uh, uh, R square. Um, you can actually uh, change these R squares uh, into AVE if you want, yeah? So you notice that you can also interchange the into AVE under the constructs here. Uh, you can also change it to your row A and Rhomba alpha, as and when you like, yeah? But I'm just gonna show you how you're gonna just extract all this uh, information out later on in terms of their reporting. Uh, now, First, we have to make sure that the loadings are all above 0 0.5. So if you notice that TMS1, TMS2, 
uh, this is fine, this is not fine. Uh, this one, the CP4 is not fine, the CP5 is not, not good, um, and also the FP5. So, always make sure you remove the indicator items which are low one at a time. So, so I'm going to start with TMS2 first. I'm just going to press delete here, calculate again. Everything maintains the same. Look at it again. Dun, dun, dun. Nope, we still have to keep removing. So remove TMS1. Calculate PLS algorithm. Uh, then we go. We can just take out all these things. We don't need all this right now. Oh, sorry, I forgot to remove it. <laughs> Delete. Why isn't it deleting? Delete. Yeah, there you go. Calculate PLS algorithm. So look at it latent variable by latent variable. Yeah, just now we said technological readiness is fine. And you notice that top sub management support is fine. Cost is fine. Competitor support. Uh, let's remove the lowest one, which is CP4 0 0.467. So remove CP4 there. Recalculate that. There you go. And CP5 is still low, so remove that again. Recalculate that. Okay. And uh, that's fine. DA is fine. FP, you have to remove the FP5. So so take away that one and recalculate again. Start calculation. Good. Now, as you can see, all the indicator loadings are above 0 0.5. That is good. Now, it is good to note here to always make sure you make a note of what are the indicator items that you have just removed. So in case you need to know what are the indicator items you removed, uh, there's always a way to look at it. Removed because uh, you can say indicator items are below 0 0.5. Okay, so what are the indicator items removed? Very easily, just go to PLS, look under the tabs on indicators, and you notice the ones that are not bold, uh, those are the ones that you've just removed. So CP4 and 5, just make a note, CP4, CP5, what else? FP5, TMS1 and TMS2. FP5, TMS1, and TMS2. There you go. And then just check on the other indicator items. Uh, look under the PLS algorithm um, results. Look under construct reliability and validity. Now you notice that the row A, everything's above 0 0.7. Composite reliability. For the latent variables, these are the latent variables. Uh, everything's above 0 0.7 as well. And the average variance extracted, everything's above 0 0.5. So this looks good. So your measurement model is good. In my next video, I'm going to show you how you are going to report this in a table. Okay, so bye for now.